Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday morning, just about, well, just about noon here. Monday, August 18th, 2025, local time here in California, 11.40 a.m. Latest activity shows a one point, a uh, little 1.0 there across Northern California. Notice here on the globe, the EMSC data is back on the globe. Looks like they had a outage there over the weekend. It is back up and running. Uh, I definitely appreciate having the EMSC data on here uh, because it goes to show the elevated activity in certain areas outside the states, areas that the USGS really do not focus on when it comes to the uh, smaller swarms out here. But uh, anyway, I'm definitely glad they got it back up and running. All right, so let's take a look here and see what we got going on here across the West Coast first, since it's lighting up out here a little bit. There's a 1.8 just on the San Andreas Fault there, a couple areas of earthquakes on the creeping section pretty close to the creeping section it looks like uh park field segment pretty quiet southern california still got a little bit of aftershock activity up here where that three-pointer struck in the coso junction region yesterday number of earthquakes so far today uh, mainly in the microquake range looks like a total tally let's see what we got here does that include that three-pointer it does not it looks like they dropped it down there maybe but uh, anyway, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up there north of Ridgecrest, Southern California there. Got uh, some smaller ma microquake activity. Nothing big going on there for now. No unusual swarms going on. Uh, Northern California still got some activity stirring up here as well. Got uh, majority of these after midnight. Looks like a bunch of twos out there all over the place. The latest, a 2.8 back over here across the Gorda Plate, the southern end of the Gorda Plate. Cascadia subduction zone holding on for now. We do have this one earthquake up here off the coast of Oregon. That uh, looks like about uh, 17 miles deep underneath this area. So that is into the Cascadia subduction zone underneath the fold and thrust belt for a 1.6. Interesting quake out there. I mean, tremor activity has been somewhat elevated. So let's go uh, see what we got for the uh, Cascadia tremor real quick across that area here's yesterday's count 261 so that earthquake that struck there about 17 miles deep into the cascadia struck right about here but uh we'll check out trimmer a little bit later on this evening when uh they get the total tally counted up there a couple earthquakes up in washington as well let's give a quick glance at the mount rainier seismograph station out here they're not showing nothing they're nothing showing up there on the usgs map uh, but let's go see what we have here on the latest data. I do like to double check this on occasion here. Got uh, probably a couple earthquakes here. These ones in the blue, those do look like localized events. Uh, some of these other ones look like earthquakes as well. I know there can be some ice quakes up here, but those are very thin, like these right here. Maybe a little blue line there as well. Uh, there's another ice quake, but uh, I, I do see some earthquake activity out there. Nothing big, no uh, increasing movement, just uh, periodic some some microquake activity that uh, probably is not being accounted for. But uh, it doesn't look like anything stirring up at the moment in terms of elevated activity, though. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here. One, well, we got a couple earthquakes outside the area, but nothing within the park. Uh, but I do want to double check the yellowstone overview well the yellowstone seismograph stations here i'm not fond of the overview right now because the amplitudes are just completely squashed so we'll check out the um, usgs model up here i don't see anything showing up this is current to 11 15 almost to the noon hour here along the west coast uh the station's offline i just like to glance around see if there's any unusual activity really nothing showing up here uh, across yellowstone so it's pretty quiet for now all right back in out of here uh man don't really see too much activity out there across the states for now aside from the oil fields that are pretty much always having earthquakes looks like one more earthquake down here off the coast of guatemala this morning 4.2 Couple earthquakes down here along the middle American Trench. Been a little bit, a little bit of activity out there recently. Uh, some newer movement down here off the coast of Chile. It does look like uh, 4.8 coming in there within about, looks like about 20 minutes or so ago. Uh, previously, 
there was a 5.6 after midnight here along that fracture boundary. That's going to be uh, an area right here. It's going to be the Nazca plate and the Antarctica plate here. It looks like uh, the darker blue here where that uh, divergent boundary activity is happening. That should increase earthquake activity out here across the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, I don't see any uptick yet, but uh, a little bit of activity stirring off the coast there of Chile right now. Uh, up into the Russia area, still seeing some movement. Fours and fives, it looks like. Let's go ahead and check out the USGS model. Got uh, two five-pointers there today. Oh, one from yesterday, one from today. A handful of fours in there as well. Uh, nothing new as far as any migration goes. Here's that earthquake in the Nankai Trough from yesterday. Uh, it looks like... Yeah, I don't see any newer activity there on the globe for now, but we do need to watch that area. The Nankai Trough's been uh, under quite a bit of strain here. Typical movement there across the cluster zone. I, again, I do like the EMSC data being shown on here because the majority of this wouldn't even show up uh, with just the USGS data on here. So I'm definitely glad they got that working. Uh, New Zealand looks like the Alpine Fault starting to move down here, 3.4. Uh, for the rest of the globe here, still got some aftershock activity around western Turkey where that uh, earthquake struck a couple weeks back here, that larger event. Uh, aftershock activity continuing there for a little while. Uh, Iceland had a little three-pointer up there as well on the uh, rift boundary. Aside from that, uh, let's see what we got going on here at Hawaii. Should be getting close here to seeing a, an eruption at Kilauea Volcano once again. Uh, the deformation data, though, still shows that it's going up. Here's the last two days. Let me show you guys the last week here going straight up. Here's our last eruption there back back on the, uh, I think it was on the 6th or so of this month. It lasted for a short time, and that's the pause right here. But notice we're going up in terms of inflation once again. And we're uh, pretty darn close here. I mean, we've exceeded the level seen in a couple of these previous episodes, so this could happen at any time as uh, far as the next eruption goes. I don't think it's going to go on in, uh, too much longer. A look at the uh, summit area. Still shows some volcanic gases out there. Again, that could uh, pop at any second. Take a quick glance here at space weather activity here on this Monday. Pretty neutral, pretty quiet out there. B5.9. Wow, that is super low in terms of the flaring activity. Uh, we do have the potential here for the auroras tonight due to high-speed solar wind stream that's uh, expected to reach the planet. This will be uh, tonight's aurora forecast. Notice the view line uh, potentially down across the northern tier states. See how that plays out, though. That's subject to... Uh, a number of different uh, things as far as the BTBZ component, which right now, let's see what we got here. It's, looks like that's closed up here. We would want that, all these run dot, these little runtime red dots here open south, so to speak. I don't see any sign of the high speed solar, solar wind stream for now, um, but that is expected to come in a little bit later on this evening. No major sunspots out there. The ones that are out here are fairly weak. They've just decayed completely here. Not a whole lot out there on the eastern limb either. So a little bit of quietness in terms of solar flare activity for now. Uh, Storm Prediction Center. Here's today's severe weather outlook. Got a little 2% chance for some tornado activity up there around the uh, Illinois area, Wisconsin Main threat today looks to be a little bit of wind and some large hail threat there in the yellow. Uh, nothing big, though. In terms of Hurricane Aaron, let's go see what's going on with that. I heard it strengthen back into a Category 4 for a little bit. It does look like there's some uh, re-strengthening here of the eye wall. It's really not moving much. Let's see what we got here for the uh, latest data. It is expected to get caught up here in the weather patterns and pressure differences and head north and then off to the northeast here rather quickly. It's at 140 mile per hour sustained wind, so it has jumped back up. Uh, right now, tropical storm 
warnings, it looks like, or tropical storm watches around the Bahamas area, it looks like. Tropical storm warning back over here in the blue. Um, let's check out the path of that real quick. Still fairly uh, the same as yesterday. Just no uh, no diversion of this uh, line all all in line, so to speak, here far as this thing uh, heading away from land. That is good. Good news there. But there is another tropical system here coming up. I'm going to show you guys the uh, dynamics here of the wind patterns. There's uh, Hurricane Aaron. Watch that uh, grow in size, but uh, it's going to weaken at the same time as it heads off to the northeast. And there should be another tropical system here, it looks like. Wow. See that? Roughly about the 26th or so. 25th, 26th. Uh, another system there. This one's showing more of a Florida hit and then riding up the eastern seaboard of the states. But that's all subject to change that far out. Either way, the models have definitely been picking up on something coming back in here around the Gulf or the eastern portion of the country as far as tropical, tropical development goes. So we will have to keep an eye on that. Again, that's towards the 25th or so of this month. As far as any close approach asteroids go out here, take a look at this. We've got this one coming in today. That's definitely within the uh, Earth-Moon distance, but a uh, little little one, 32 foot. That would still probably create a, a neat little fireball, uh, but even so, that's for that small of a rock and that distance, uh, we're pretty safe there. Nothing else in terms of uh, any major close approaches out there. Uh, let's see, a couple earthquakes there, or at least one earthquake on the Petrolia station. Got to watch that over here. Been pretty active. Who knows when that's going to take place here? It's just, it's, uh, you can't really worry about it 20, 24 7, though, right? But you do got to be prepared out here. You say the Cascadia has been building up some steam for a little while. All right, so let me see here real quick what we got for the largest earthquake. Uh, oh, after midnight, that goes to that 5.6 here off the coast of Chile. That should, like I said, this should increase movement out here along the Peru Chile Trench. It does look like it's on a strike slip boundary. Here's spreading seafloor center, but that should add further strain out here, increasing the potential of uh, some earthquake activity along that region. All right, folks, um, we'll have a good one. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the Monday night update. Take care.